Hi, folks. Pastor Mike Spalding here with my good friend and big brother. I am Pastor Casper, and we're here together to encourage you to keep listening to Deception Detection Radio, because we're both on this network with our individual shows. Yes, and yes. And we're going to be doing some things together as well, and I'll just not just say no more. Hey, folks, tune in Deception Detection Radio, some of the best programming in Christian talk, news, encouragement, and Bible studies. God bless you. God bless Imagine this, a foster parent to 180 girls over a five-year period is charged with sexually assaulting five of them. But there's no need to imagine, because that's the story of Miguel Brusino. And Medina County, Texas Sheriff Randy Brown is upset with Child Protective Services for allowing the placements. Welcome to Wait Till You Hear This. I'm Steve Eastman. The scene of some of the alleged crimes is a city named Divine, located about 35 miles west of San Antonio. Randy Brown is sheriff of Medina County, where Divine is located. Sheriff, thanks for taking time to talk with us today. You're welcome. I understand all Mr. Brusino's foster children were girls, is that correct? That is correct. So do you think other charges are likely beyond the five we know about today? I know your office uh, arrested Mr. Brusino on a charge of solicitation to commit sexual assault of a child back in 2012, and that he eventually pled guilty to a reduced charge of attempted assault. But were there any other child sex-related charges or convictions on his record before or during 2005 to 2010 when he was a licensed foster parent? No, there was not. The allegations that were made that we investigated and due to a lack of uh, uh, those young girls being able to tell the truth, probably looking back. Uh, you know, if you're living with the wolf, it's hard for you to stand up and tell the truth about that wolf. So because of the lack of evidence and someone willing to cooperate, we moved forward with those charges back then. And then because of the lack of having a credible person stand up and tell the truth, it was reduced to the misdemeanor charge that he was found guilty of or pled to. Well, let's get to the uh, bottom line. Why did Child Protective Services allow the placement of 180 girls with Mr. Brasino over that five-year period? Isn't there some sort of vetting process in place? We're just learning about the foster side of it because that's something that we don't typically get involved in. You have to go back all the way to 2005 is when he was licensed, and he was licensed in another county, which is Bear County, joins Medina County. And then sometime in 2008, he moved to Medina County, where he continued to foster young girls. How that list works to where they fill those however many slots he's allowed, we're working to figure that out ourselves. I've also heard CPS outsourced some of its placement responsibilities to third-party companies. What could happen to those firms? It's hard to say. You know, I can't say that they didn't do everything that was right, except for how do you sit back and you see that many girls going through a house that's usually just overseen by a grown man and not raise a flag to wonder about what's actually going on there. Well, Sheriff, the Texas foster care system faced a lawsuit a few years ago. It was filed by a group called Children's Rights. Judge Janice Graham Jack ruled the system unconstitutional. Here's a quote from her ruling. Children have been shuttled throughout a system where rape, abuse, psychotropic medication, and instability are the norm. Does that sound plausible judging from your own knowledge of Child Protective Services? Yes, it does. I've seen them at work firsthand and was completely, I mean, I can't believe the direction that they would go. It seems like those that are easy to contact are the ones that they go after, while those that need to be gone after are the ones that are left alone. You know, if it's a single child or multiple children, and in this case, you know, 180 plus girls that went through this so-called foster home. Well, as a sheriff, what can you do, if anything, to alleviate the problems with CPS? 
I don't know, but in my county, we can definitely make a difference because there are some good foster parents in the county that are good people that are doing it for the right reason. And if we get a whisper of someone that's running one of these homes, we're going to spend a lot of time digging into what's going on there. Every other county is going to have to do that. We're going to have to take care of our own backyards, and then hopefully CPS will restructure and, and look at it a little different. You know, I think if they had law enforcement type investigators that were out doing investigations, that maybe that would make a difference. Sheriff, thanks again for spending a few minutes with us. Many law enforcement agencies would never question CPS. I'm glad you have a different perspective. It's about our kids. It's not about everybody else. So uh, whatever it takes to look out for, you know, who's coming up behind us is what we need to be doing. We need to stand up and draw a line in the sand and say that's it. Randy Brown is sheriff of Medina County, Texas, just west of San Antonio. This is Steve Eastman for Wait Till You Hear This. Discover more stories like this one on our website, waittillyouhearthis.com. Thank you.